WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Hello, everyone. It's Professor Schwartz once again from the WSTKS FM Worldwide Studios with a couple of questions for you this time. So, how is your student learning team doing after the completion of your first collaborative project last week? Did everything go well, or were there challenges your team had to address? Both are questions you should explore together to help pinpoint where you need to adjust team practices, and even if things went pretty well during your collaborative work, it's probably a safe bet that there might be two or three areas where your team can improve its approach. In the next segment, we'll look at the first of two hypothetical student learning teams as you ponder your response to the rhetorical questions that I've just posed to you. See you in one moment. Welcome back. Okay, today I'm actually without the usual mug of coffee, if you can believe it, and my feline friend Onyx the Cat is nowhere to be found. In any event, let's get started. This time we're looking at steps your student learning team can take to find out how you're doing, whether you need to make any changes to your collaborative approach, and where those changes might be needed. Before we get to that, though, it's useful to think for a minute about what effective student learning team collaboration might look like. What then is your understanding of the term effective collaboration? Does that mean little communication between members until the last minute, before an assignment or project is due, with false starts, misunderstanding, confusion, and the related drama? <laughs> Or does effective collaboration mean early and consistent communication between you, effective organization, planning, mutual support, and follow-through between team members? After a station identification, we'll come back in the next segment and consider one imaginary student learning team to help answer those questions. Stay tuned! You're listening to WSTKS FM Worldwide Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century. If you find this podcast helpful, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Hello again. Let's talk now about the first hypothetical student learning team, which in this case falls short of the expectations for effective collaboration. This type of team features one or more members who make little effort to communicate with each other until the last minute before a due date, or they are completely missing in action. Likewise, team members engage in scant planning, organization, and poor execution of assignments. Moreover, members of a weak student learning team show little respect for each other and treat participation in team activities as an afterthought. In addition, a student learning team falls short of expectations for effective collaboration when its members offer little to no voluntary exchange of knowledge or skills with each other. By the same token, team members exhibit a lack of flexibility and cohesion when problems or unforeseen circumstances arise. When it comes to collaborative decision-making, members of a student learning team like this are reluctant, reticent, or even obstructive during the collaborative process. Members of such a team have difficulty setting and meeting deadlines, starting work in a timely way, or otherwise inconvenience each other due to inactivity, poor communication, planning, organization, or other issues. When it comes to problem solving, members of a weak student learning team have difficulty developing, sharing, or trying potential solutions to problems or unforeseen circumstances. Where collegiality is concerned, members of a team like this exhibit great difficulty assisting each other. Last of all, members might also demonstrate a total unwillingness to collaborate with the rest of the team in the development of a single, unified, and cohesive project. In the next segment, we'll contrast this first student learning team with a second imaginary but more capable team 
that meets or even exceeds the expectations for effective collaboration. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. So far, we've considered one hypothetical student learning team that falls short of the expectations for effective collaboration. But what are the characteristics exhibited by a team that meets or even exceeds those same expectations? Well, as you might expect, the differences are stark. A student learning team that meets or exceeds the expectations for effective collaboration contains members who practice timely, rapid communication and make themselves readily available to each other. Team members plan meticulously and organize well ahead of time for their weekly meetings and larger project activities. Members of a strong, well-oiled student learning team like this have well-defined roles but also mutually support each other by volunteering to help finish the various and separate components they are each working on that go to a larger project. All team members cultivate inclusive practices, including respectful listening, plus effective habits of both discussion and inquiry. As a result, they help move the team forward in a productive way without wasted time or effort. Members of a student learning team that meets or exceeds the expectations for effective collaboration routinely share knowledge, opinions, and skills in all team activities. They willingly seek different solutions, approaches, and strategies in an effective, original, and creative way when it comes to intellectual flexibility. Members of a highly cohesive student learning team are, furthermore, willing to help each other identify and carry out necessary changes and encourage collective action where decision-making is concerned. Teams that meet or exceed the expectations for effective collaboration are also able to reach consensus more easily. Members of a team like this that meets or exceeds the expectations for effective collaboration value, encourage, and acknowledge each other's contributions, taking joint responsibility for work that reflects minority and majority opinions or conclusions within the team. Moreover, team members manage their time well and complete smaller assignments or larger projects without need to change the overall team plan, time frame, or reassign work because someone has dropped the ball and missed a deadline. Finally, members of the most effective student learning teams make consistent efforts to find and share solutions to problems and unforeseen circumstances. The dynamic of such teams is highly cohesive and collegial, with members willing to facilitate collaborative work through active listening and assistance of each other. In a moment, We'll conclude today's episode with 10 questions your student learning team can use to survey and assess its own work habits, practices, and processes during the first third of the course. Stay tuned! You're listening to WSTKS FM Worldwide Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century. If you find this podcast helpful, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Good to see you again, everyone. Okay, that will just about do it for this episode on how your student learning team can assess its work habits, practices, and processes so far in the course. How do you do that? Well, here's my call to action for you this week. Have an honest and civil exchange with all the members of your student learning team during which you discuss the following questions. 1. How well does your student learning team communicate? 2. How would you rate team planning and organization? 3. How would you rate your team discussions? Question 4. How well do the members of your team share knowledge with each other? 5. How intellectually agile or flexible is your student learning team? 6. How effective is your team at making unified decisions? Question 7. How effective is your team at building consensus? 8. How might you rate your team when it comes to time management? Question 9. How effective is your team with problem solving? And last of all, question 10. How collegial is your overall team dynamic? 
For your convenience, I've posted the Week 6 Survey of Team Habits, Practices, and Processes questions, the ones I've just led you through, into the description below. Be mindful that any difference of opinion in in reply to any of these questions indicates something that your team needs to address seriously and rethink in its approach to its collaborative work for this course. When you do that, your digital collaborative work with the members of your student learning team becomes not only easier to accomplish, but richer, more interesting, and substantive in nature. Try it and see. And so we come to the end of another program from WSTKS FM Worldwide about how your student learning team can improve its digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Using the survey questions shared in the previous segment, take the week six survey to find out where your student learning team can tighten up its own work habits, practices, and processes to become a team that meets or exceeds the expectations for effective collaborative work. When you follow the advice shared in today's episode, the digital collaboration within your student learning team becomes even more cohesive and efficient. In short, you set yourself up to succeed through the active cultivation of numerous 21st century employability skills as you and your team learn about course material, create, and disseminate your own new knowledge about it each week. Be sure to tune in again for more helpful tips, tricks, and advice based on my 25-plus years of teaching and working with thousands of undergraduates at three Big Ten universities across the upper Midwest of the United States. In the meantime, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in class, online, or during Zoom office hours if you drop by with a question. Stay healthy, have a safe, and a productive week. With special regards, from Onyx, the cat what am, wherever he may be. So long, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye, everyone. You've just heard a podcast from WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century.